in time, or is it simply nice to have him around at this level? Uh, no, he's here. He's not going to suit up. We have uh, everybody else is uh, suited up. You know, our two two-way guys are, are both healthy, uh, Damien and, uh, and and Kai. So we're at we're at 13. So Smiley came up this morning. He played in LA last night and uh, just came up to be around the team and to see the training staff and then help out uh, back to some um, there later on? I'm sorry? Is Eric Pascal playing or not? Yeah, Eric's playing. Uh, hi, Steve. Um, have you gotten a chance to talk to David Fisdale? I know you guys you had spent time with, with the franchise a couple of years ago. I mean, have you spoken to him and any other thoughts on him getting enough of an opportunity in New York? Uh, we texted uh, after uh, the news came out. Um, we haven't spoken, um, and uh, you know, I, I don't don't have any other any other thoughts or comments. Well, I mean, you had mentioned something last week about how maybe who were in New York things. Yeah. I mean, is that something where you know the, there's not enough patience maybe given to the situation where you know the Knicks had a lot of young players and. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't. I'm not focused on what they're doing. I, I, I made that comment, um, and it was sincere. Um, these these jobs are really, really difficult. Uh, these head coaching jobs they're they're hard to find. They're hard to get. And then once you're once you're in them, you're really dependent on your your players, uh, the talent level of your players, and the support of your organization. And the strength of your organization. So my comments the other night were sincere, and um, I let them speak for themselves. Hey, coach. Five wins this year for you guys. Obviously, you're dealing with the injuries and integrating a lot of young players here. So if you're not going to win on a nightly basis like you have been in the past, what's a win for you with this group? Well, I think the point of, of this season for us is to develop our young players. Um, we've got a lot of interesting young prospects, and uh, so we're trying to teach them every day and give them every opportunity to play and figure out which ones uh, are going to be part of our future and try to help each of them uh, progress and make the most of their own uh, circumstances and their own careers. And uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, get, get healthy and um, look to the future. You know, we'll, we'll try to bounce back, um, but uh, yeah, obviously with Steph and Clay out, you know, it's uh, you know, we're, we're, the focus has shifted uh, more to the development of the young guys. And with Pascal specifically, the 41st pick, now he's in the rookie of the year conversation. I mean, sometimes there's the bias that maybe four-year players get overlooked. I mean, is that how you look at this, or why do you think he has developed here so quickly? Well, he's uh, physically he he stands up to anybody in the NBA. He's just a big, strong, explosive kid. Um, and then I think having four years in college is a big deal. You know, we we tend to gravitate towards the uh, the younger guys because of the potential. Um, there's so many players who come into the league after you know, one year of school, uh, or you know maybe playing overseas or whatever. Um, but there's a pretty big difference between 19 and 21, you know, maturity-wise, uh, physically. And so I, I think there's a lot to be said for, for players who have uh, stuck it out in college. You know, Draymond Green is, is one of them. He's a great example of it. And so Eric uh, stands out in, in that regard as somebody who uh, came in physically ready to play, but also um, emotionally, you know, maturity-wise, he's, he's ready. The guys from Run TMC are reuniting for our broadcast, and that trio just had two years together. But why do you think their legacy carries on? Well, they were a, a dynamic uh, scoring trio, and um, I think at the time, um, I think the whole league was, was kind of uh, enamored with their play. You know, it was um, the early '90s. 89. 
So it's kind of late, uh, late eighties, early nineties that that if you remember the league at that time was had gotten really physical and everybody was just beating the hell out of each other. And you had these three guys on the West Coast who were running up and down, having a really good time, scoring 120 a game. I think people were were enamored with that. In some ways, they were ahead of their time. You know, Nelly was kind of the original small ball guy, and um, he doesn't get enough credit for it today. Um, but what everybody's doing now, you know, downsizing, he did it long before anyone else. And so, uh, Mitch and Tim and Chris were. They were part of that that group, or one of Nelly's groups uh, that played small, and uh, they were fast and, and fun to watch. Did they fit into a culture too, like were they cool? Yeah, oh. yeah, for, uh, absolutely. Um, that's a pretty cool nickname too. Hey, Steve, it, when you were playing, um, it was kind of like during the, the golden era for the Knicks, and uh, you know when the Bulls, even the Spurs, you played in the finals. How special is it when New York? as a good basketball team, is it perplexing to you or worrisome that it's been so long since they did feel? Uh, I've got great memories, uh, particularly when I was with Chicago, of playing in the Garden and uh, you know, hearing the, the Go New York, Go New York, Go song. Uh, and uh, I didn't really like it at the time. But uh, looking back, uh, fantastic rivalry. And those teams were, were were tough, uh, physical. Uh, they had an identity. They, the fans uh, fell in love with with, with that, those teams, and the Garden was just electric. So, uh, I think people recognize that New York is a basketball town. It's a basketball city, and uh, I think most people in the league want the Knicks to be good. I know I do. I think uh, it's it's something that's missing from the league. We need them to have success. They're a marquee franchise. And uh, as for why it's been a long drought, uh, you guys look into that a lot more carefully than I do. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, I would like to see see things get turned around there for the sake of the league and the sake of the Knicks fans because they have they have great fans there. And it's every year we go there one one time a year. It's one of my favorite places to. Steve, have you gotten a chance to watch Allen's film from Santa Cruz, and do you have any thoughts on his development? Yeah, I've, I've watched him a couple of times. Uh, I think he's, uh, he's doing well. He's, uh, he's, he's a young, young kid. He's, um, he's just turned 19, so he's got uh, some, some growing to do. Uh, he's got to get in better shape. He looks like he's dragging out there sometimes. Uh, gets tired quickly. Um, you know, he's carrying a pretty big body uh, up and down the court, but he's very skilled. You can see, uh, you know, how he knocks down threes and puts them on the floor. Uh, very coordinated, very skilled, and uh, good prospect. So he's exactly where he should be. You know, getting a lot of playing time in San Cruz. Steve, you faced uh, Neil Aquino with Team USA at the World Cup, where you had a, a pretty good game against your guards. Um, what makes him such a good defender despite his young age? Well, he's really long and active, and uh, he's got good anticipation. He's, he can guard either spot. You know, when we played uh, France, he was uh, he was good on and off the ball. You know, he, you, you could tell he had good instincts, and uh, so he's uh, he's an excellent defender. Great, right. is that it? Cool. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it.